And that brings me to number five of my top ten list of reasons why I love self-storage. And that's because of the multiple profit centers that are available within self-storage. In addition to retail, you've got billboards that you can put up on site and cell phone towers, truck rental services through the third-party companies like Penske and U-Haul, or you can go out and buy your own truck or lease your own truck like a lot of my students are doing and painting their logos up on it and driving them around town and parking them out front and acting as their own moving billboard. Uh, with the new HIPAA guidelines that have come into play in the past several years, most professional organizations now have to store their confidential client records for up to seven years now. And, well, it, it, it's expensive to, to have to do that in their Class A office space, and so they're taking them to self-storage facilities, and a lot of these facilities are not only offering storage for that, but they've taken it a step further, and, and they're implementing a full-blown record storage center where they, they barcode and scan all the documents in, and then they charge the clients anytime they want to have those documents couriered back to their office or scanned and emailed in. And then after they expire in seven years, these companies are offering shredding services as well and charging them by the box or by the pound to do so eBay Edit Centers. Uh, we've seen eBay has come out with their own new brand of store, if you will, and it's co-located in self-storage facilities. It's a convenience for your clients who need to sell things off, and perhaps sometimes to pay for their rent, <laughs> and also it drives traffic for the na into the neighborhood or from the neighborhood into the facility for people that want to come there and, and have us list their things for them as well. Uh, but probably the big, biggest benefit to us as an owner is that, once again, those managers, even though they're there part-time, they're twiddling their thumbs a lot, so this gives them another way to be able to generate some revenue and offset their salaries. Then we move on to temperature-controlled storage where you you get charged by the utility companies a little bit more for heating and air, but you charge your customers uh, quite a bit more, kind of the old uh, Ben and Jerry's uh, principle, if you will, where they add another quarter cup of chocolate chips compared to their competition, yet charge double the amount of their competition. Mm -hmm. And then specialized storage, from wine storage and guns and furs and, and art and other collectibles to selling tenant insurance. We can do that through either the kiosk or through uh, the managers on site. And vending machines, I mean, yeah, that's an afterfit. We always put a vending machine in every one of our facilities. And pack and ship businesses, I mean, gosh, what, what better business to be co-located in a self-storage facility than a pack and ship business? And the list goes on and on. Mike, we've identified uh, approaching 40 different profit centers that you can add to a self-storage facility. And uh, you can see anywhere of a, from a 10 to 15% in increase in income. And some of my students that are really not going out of the park are seeing anywhere from a 25 to 30% increase in income with very little time and very little capital expense to invest in any of these profit centers. All right, that brings us to number four on my top ten list of reasons why I love self-storage. And that's the fact that there is almost no lost rent in self-storage. Almost no lost rent. And here's why. The ability to collect back rent and late fees in self-storage falls under the individual state's lien laws versus eviction laws like we have in the habitational world or single-family homes and apartments. And so here's what happens. In my facilities, rent is due on the first, grace period until the fifth, late on the sixth. On the sixth, we have the right to remove the, gate, the, the client's gate code. In other words, they can't get into the facility anymore. And if we have a facility that doesn't have a gate on, we can also put what's called an overlock on their unit as well, which is what you're looking at on the screen right now. Every manufacturer of doors and door latches has a place for two locks, one for the clients and one for ours. And so when rent is late, we go out there and put one of these locks on, and they can't get into their unit until they come in and pay us for their back rent and their late fees. And they trust me, they cannot get those locks off. It would take a grinder and a stick of dynamite to get those things off. And so then the process works like this, and I'll try to summarize it real quickly. What happens is we, we send a certified letter letting them know that they, we have a lien on their unit. We send them another one stating that uh, we have a cut lock notice that we're going to cut their lock off and sell their goods if they don't come in and pay. And then we send them another notice when it comes close to time to be able to auction this that we're going to auction their goods off. And then the law provides that we have to post a notice in the public newspapers. And so what we're doing is uh, we have to post the name of our facility, the number of the unit, and then also the client's name. So in essence, what we're doing is we're publicly shaming the clients into coming in and paying their rent, which is sometimes will happen. They'll get a, a phone call or uh, somebody at work will say, hey, uh, uh, hey Jim, I saw that uh, Alcatraz Storage is going to uh, sell your stuff off. You're, you're famous. You're in the newspapers. You may want to get down there and, uh, <laughs> and pay up before you do so. Or what will happen a lot of times, Mike, is their parents will see it, and they'll come in and, and pay for it as well, which is fine with us either way. As long as we get the money, we really don't care. But if they don't, then after 90 days, we have the legal right to auction their stuff off.